Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Riz. I'm presenting a paper titled An Asian Perspective on Early Human Dispersal from Africa. It's written by Robin Daniel and Will Roebrook in 2005, and it discusses the possibility of an earlier dispersal of hominids out of Africa. The first question asked by this paper is who were the first Asians? It's believed that the first Asians were Homo ergaster, leaving Africa as early as 1.7 to 1.9 million years ago. The reason for this is because Ergaster has more human-like body proportions, uh, walks upright, and has larger brains than the contemporary Paranthropus or Australopithecines. One of the issues, though, with this uh, hypothesis is that we don't have archaeological sites in this area here, the Sinai region, or in the Arabian Peninsula, the areas that are believed to be the migration routes of Ergaster out of Africa. Also, another issue with this is the fact that there are early Pleistocene sites in Asia that are older than 1.9 million years old. For example, there's the Rewak Pakistan rock art site, it's not rock art actually, it's uh, stone tools, uh, which is 2.1 million years old. And there's also a Moju character cranium in Java, Indonesia at 1.8 million years old. If we believe these dates to be authentic and these sites to be as antiquity yes, as they are, I just made that word up by the way, um, then we actually have to believe that early hominins left Africa earlier than we believe. Yeah. Um, could other hominins have populated Asia? Well, if Australopithecines probably colonized Africa in the savanna grasslands as early as 3 to 3.5 million years ago, and Australopithecus gary was living in a similar environment in Northeast Africa 2.5 million years ago, then it's possible that hominins followed the same savanna grasslands out of Africa into Asia, because they were the same grasslands at that point in time. Could it have been possible? Well, one of the issues is, and the reason why I'm presenting this paper to you all today in the first place, is we don't have evidence, definitive evidence, of early hominins in Asia. So we can't really say that yes, indeed, they left at a certain date, and we know this because we have hominin fossils that are two million years old in Asia. Um, but it's possible that they follow the same environments, as I had mentioned earlier, from Africa into Asia as early as 3 to 3.5 million years ago. It could even be possible that they left as early as 2.6 million years ago when they first made their first stone tools. Um, obviously, if hominids had traveled 2,500 kilometers to the east, uh, the no, that's supposed to be west, <laughs> to the west of the Rift Valley, um, through wood, woodland and savanna belts, then it's possible that they traveled the same distance in the same environment to the east. That should be east. Um, one, the next section of the paper that was a little bit contentious for me was the section about the absence of evidence and the evidence of absence. Uh, I believe that it was a bit of a double standard here because earlier when I presented in the second slide, the absence of evidence of Ergaster leaving Africa, well this section talks about the absence of hominids in Asia and talking about how we can't discount them being there. So when you read this section for yourself, be very critical about it. Um, the conclusion of the paper, or at least what I believe it to be, was that there is a need for different models of out of Africa other than the one that we already have. Um, there's three things that we need to take into account when thinking of different models. And one of them is, when did the first hominids leave Africa? Secondly, we need to identify whether we know the full range of hominids in the Pleistocene in Africa and in Asia. And lastly, we need to identify and understand that Asia may not have just received hominins, but also supplied hominins to, to Africa in the first place. Of course, to find any of this out, we need to do further studies in Africa and in Asia. Actually, we need to do more further, further studies everywhere, really. Um, in conclusion, uh, like I had just mentioned earlier, we need to conduct more excavations in Asia. At this point, the data set that we have in Asia is not comparable to Africa. So we can't make conclusions about hominins in Asia like we can in Africa. So we just need to dig more, dig more holes, guys. Um, the idea of Savannistan needs to be explored. We have to identify the fact that the grasslands in Asia and Africa are similar enough for species to travel to and from. And we can't just look at it as just Africa and just Asia as we do now. The continents are, are similar because of their environments. Um, with that being said though, Asia is a large landmass and there's a lot of different environments in the, the area too, so we need to identify that. Um, we also need to focus on other hominins, not just homo. It's unfair 
for us to discount paranthropists or australopithecines as being the first migratory hominids outside of Africa based on their smaller, their smaller brains and the fact that they didn't walk the same as, as homos did, uh, or gaster, rectus, or us. Um, also, we need to recognize and accept that early stone tool sites in, Af in Asia, older than 1.9 million years ago, are real. Um, if we find sites such as the site in Pakistan, which is 2.1 million years old, and we identify that to be a, dis a definitive site, and it's as old as we believe it to be, then we need to, we need to put that into our, uh, our cultural, our mosaic of ideas of migratory models. Uh, and lastly, we need to entertain other hypotheses other than out, out of Africa. Thank you. <laughs>